why do I want to provoke? I think I might have to get back to my parents on this point. <laughs> Fashion's a bit of a problem with me because you have to really appeal to too many people and I like appealing to maybe one or two and then I like them to um, be interested in me but never dare copy me. Who would copy me, let's face it? I mean, who would be prepared to go out like this? I sometimes ask myself why I do it. Hi guys! So as you can see, this look is inspired by Lee Barry. Lee Barry was a performance artist, club promoter and designer and just all around creative crazy personality. He had his own club night called Taboo so I would class him as being one of the like original club kids. I'd say that his main model was himself. I watched an interview where he said he would have a problem being a designer and doing a full range of clothing for other people to wear because he doesn't want people to copy him. So the fact that I've probably done this look inspired by him, he would probably not approve of, but he's such a legend that there's no way I'm not going to do a Lee Barry look. It's got to be done. Hi! So as you can see, I'm not wearing a wig cap or any makeup. I'm fresh faced because the first thing we're going to do is apply a bowl cap. And this bowl cap is from preciousaboutmakeup.com. To prep the hair ready to apply the bowl cap, we need the hair to be as flat as possible. So I would completely wet the hair and add hairspray or gel, anything to get the hair as flat down to your head as possible. So this is pretty much what the standard bald cap looks like. This is the back and then I'm going to flip it over and show you the front. With my fingers placed on the inside of the bald cap, I'm just stretching it open slightly and pulling it over my head. It will take a while to adjust the bald cap. What you're aiming for is to have no wrinkles in it so it looks as smooth as possible and I would push a lot of the bald cap to the back so you can trim that off later. Now that the cap's in place I need to cut holes out for my ears. I'm using a white eyeliner pencil to map out the shape that I'll be cutting. The shape that we're going for kind of looks as though you're drawing on a sideburn and then you just want to follow the inside of your ear and down onto your neck. I'm then using some really small scissors to cut this out. You don't want to go in with some massive big scissors because you need to have a lot of control and it is next to your face so you need to be as careful as possible. Take your time when you're cutting the ear. I would just cut upwards and just make a little slit and then because the cap is so taut, it will pop up and your ear will just come out of it anyway. You don't want to cut too much of the ear away and have a big gaping hole there. To attach the bald cap and keep it in place, I'm applying spirit gum to the edges of the bald cap and then keeping them pressed down onto my face for a couple of seconds and that way it'll be stuck down securely. Because this look is only for the sake of photos and this tutorial, I'm not going to be sticking down the bald cap properly at the back. I'm just going to stick the two sides at the back because that's the only bit that you would see on camera. If I was going out, I would stick the back down properly. And same as before, I'm just using spirit gum to attach those bits to my head. So the seam of the bald cap doesn't look as prominent, I'm using liquid latex on a sponge and just stippling that all around the edges just so it blends into my face. Once the latex is dry, I'm patting it with translucent powder. This will just take away the shine from the latex and it makes any makeup that you want to apply on top of the latex a lot easier to blend out. Okay, so I know it looks like I've jumped a complete step. All I'm using now is face paint. The makeup that you see on the bald cap at the minute is another product. It wasn't working quite well to cover what needs to be covered. So I just decided to scrap that bit of the tutorial and just show you 
the bit that I am actually using, which is face paint. Once I'm happy with the coverage on my face and bald cap, I'm then priming my eyes. I'm then using a black eyeliner pencil to mark out an exaggerated cut crease shape. I'm doing this on the bottom lid as well and then bringing it up to a point to join the top lid. I'm then using that same eyeliner pencil to map out the eyebrows. I'm not really concerned about these being all eyebrows on fleek and any of that. This was the 80s and it was a club kid look. So the eyebrows are going to be quite thick and chunky. I'm blending grey and black eyeshadow along the line of the cut crease. The area that's going to be the darkest and have the most eyeshadow is actually going to be the inner corner up towards the brow bone. The reference picture that I'm looking at of Lee has a lot of product around that area and then it kind of disperses out towards the outer corners of the eye. I'm then using a smaller, denser brush to pack on more of that black pigment directly above the cut crease line. I'm repeating that process underneath the eye as well. I'm then going back to my blending brush and buffing out the black shadow underneath the eye and in the corner of my eye as well. Although I'm only using black eyeshadow for this part, I'm taking my time with it because I want to make sure that the blending's smooth. Because of the shape of the eye, it could easily look too heavy and not blended out, but I don't want that. I want it to look nice and smooth and still create the shape that I'm aiming for. Once I've finished blending out the black eyeshadow, I'm then filling in that entire shape on the lid with white cream paint. I'm then setting that with a white eyeshadow. I'm now curling my natural eyelashes and brushing a little bit of white face paint through them, ready for the falses. I'm then just sticking on the eyelashes that I made. To make the eyelashes white, I've coated them with a layer of white face paint and white liquid eyeliner. I'm outlining my eyebrows with the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Trooper and then I'm going to be filling them in with NYX Jet Black Gel Liner. You know I can't do a look without concealing my eyebrows so what I'm using here is a white Crayolan pan stick. Before I set the face I'm just going in again with the white face paint on a beauty blender just to make sure that the texture is all the same and there's not any patches or anything like that. Once I'm happy with the coverage I'm then setting the face with Ben Nye Neutral Set Translucent Powder. I'm using Concrete Minerals Hi-Fi Pigment. I'm starting out with the nose contour and then buffing it onto the cheeks. To make the blending smoother, I'm using Dolly Pop from the Sugar Pill Pro Palette. I'm then softening the edges of the pink shadow using my Beauty Blender with just a little bit of white face paint on it. I'm then going back in with the pink shadow and pigment. I'm just kind of focusing this around the nose area because that's where the colour is brightest. Now I've got that shadow down on the cheeks, I can go back to the underneath of the eyes and blend out more black and grey. For the lips, I started out by outlining Lee's lip shape using eyeliner. And then I'm filling that in using Jeffree Star's Red Rum and Weirdo. I'm doing one colour at a time. So once Red Rum has dried, I'm then going on to do the top lip with Weirdo. Lee used to create his signature drips using a squeezy bottle full of paint. 
I would have liked to have used his technique, but because I didn't plan to do this tutorial, I don't actually have anything that I would need to do that. So I'm just going to be using face paint. Normally, I would let the paint drip into its own direction, but because Lee used actual paint, I want the face paint to look as thick as normal paint. So I'm hand painting on the drips, and then I'll just be mixing up a batch of face paint to kind of drip over the top of that just so it looks as thick as real paint. I'm applying more paint towards the back of my head so it looks as though all the drips have come from that one point. Now it's time for the legendary black neck, which I'm all sure you've seen me do before, but I'm gonna give you a little history lesson about black neck. Boy George's musical, Taboo, was set in the 80s and based on the new romantic scene at the time. Boy George featured Lee in the musical and also did a few Lee Bowery inspired looks at the time, which all included black neck. Lee didn't strictly use black or black neck in all of his makeup looks, he used a different range of colours which created a signature Lee Bowery face. Black neck is also common within the music industry, um, people like Marilyn Manson, Motionless in White, it's very popular within like the metal and like rock genre of music. So now you know my inspirations behind black neck. You can stop with the come on chin strap because these guys were all around a lot longer before Pearl. So now we've got that out of the way, let's get back to the tutorial and snatch this face with the black face paint. One thing they've got in common is an incredible creative force. So they're all surging forward. So nightclubs for me is just like a way of parading my um, sort of garments and, and me. I really hope that you've enjoyed this Lee Barry makeup tribute and that if you didn't know who he was, you've learned a little bit of history as well. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.